New Orleans, New Orleans, <laughs> you say that. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans, <laughs> I can't say that. Okay, the reason I will not be participating in Tome Topple number 10. It's because it's February 7th through February 20th. Do you guys know how many books I have planned for February? I think I went crazy in January, and I think I can be crazy in February as well. Maybe I can. So first up, I'm going to be doing a buddy read with my best friend, and we're going to read the Malcolm X autobiography. He has already read it like 20 years ago and recommended it for me to read for Black History Month. Kobe Bryant's recent passing, I figured this could be a little tribute. I'll read his book. Well, created by him, written by Ivy Clare. He's got a whole bunch of them, did you guys know? None of them are as beautiful as this one. Epoca. Can I get that in the light? It's okay. It's like a rainbow tree, a shimmery rainbow tree, and it's like on the board. It's not a dust jacket. I saw this at Barnes and Noble. Thought it was beautiful, and then I picked it up, and it felt beautiful. Then I opened it, and the beauty continued. If that looks like those pages are like shifting rainbow sherbet, it's because it is. So it's like a gradient. It's like what do they call it? Ombre now. Look at this. You know that's beautiful. Another book that I'll be reading is Time Stamps, Musings of an Introverted Black Boy. The title just sounded really interesting. It's not a super large book. It was one I added to my list later on. I was at book people and wandering around and saw it. It wasn't so large that I felt I couldn't squeeze it in also, so I thought I would get it. Introverted Black Boy. Done. Had to read it. Now another black legend that we've lost recently, Toni Morrison. I will be reading one of her books, my sister's favorite book of all time, and that is The Bluest Eye. I've never read any Toni Morrison, so this will be an experience for me, and I'm hoping that I'll love it. However, I love the color purple, and my sister hated it. So I'm a little concerned that our, like, black, culturally significant authorship Fan base is opposite. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Do any of you like The Bluest Eye and The Color Purple? I mean, they're like right next to each other in the rainbow. They should be friends, right? I'll also be reading a book that I had gifted for Christmas to Jesse E. from Bowties and Books, and that is Prince, The Last Interview, and Other Conversations. There's a whole series of these books based on different people. Specifically, I was very interested in Prince. That's why I had got it for them. We're both big Prince fans. And I couldn't believe that I did not, like, sneak read it before I mailed it out. <laughs> not that I would ever do that. I've never done that before. What are you looking at? Don't look at me. Another autobiography that I'll be reading is Nina Simone's. And her book is titled I Put a Spell on You, which is also one of her very famous songs that she sings. If you check under my playlist, there's a music one and you can see some Nina Simone in there. So give it a listen if you've never listened before and see how you like her music. She also has a lot of really great interviews about blackness, about artistry and creativity, about the artist's role in the world and how important they are. I don't know what's better, her music or her interviews. Hmm. Two books I bought on recommendation from Starla, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison and The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And if you haven't seen her Afro-Latina slam poetry on YouTube, I'm going to put a link. It is amazing. I'll also be reading Overcoming Katrina, African American Voices from the Crescent City and Beyond, forward by Jimmy Carter. This is a book written by a white woman, but it tells the stories of 27 people who went through Hurricane Katrina and its aftermath. Overcoming Katrina tells the stories of 27 New Orleans residents as they fought to survive Hurricane Katrina and its aftermath. Their oral histories offer first-hand experiences, Overcoming approaches the question of why New Orleans matters from perspectives of the individuals who lived, loved, worked, and celebrated life and death there prior to being scattered across the country by Hurricane Katrina. These narratives are memorials to the corner stores, the Baptist churches, the community health clinics, and those streets where the aunties stood on the corner and whose physical traces have now all been washed away. They conclude with visions of a safer, equitably rebuilt New Orleans. Some books that I want to get to, but I'm not sure if I will. Well, their eyes were watching God. 
Now, this is a book that when I tell people I've never read it, some of them are really shocked, so I don't know if it's something I should have read in school and just somehow weaseled out of, or I don't know. But I've not read it, and there's a beautiful deckled edge, soft, floppy, small paperback version of it that I see in bookstores all the time, even though I already have it on Kindle. But you know, sometimes a book just needs to be held. I think that might be one of them. I've also wanted to read To Kill a Mockingbird for a while. Friends have told me that I may not like the book, but then I was listening to Books Unbound, and they were talking about graphic novels from classics like The Great Gatsby, George Orwell books. I was like, oh, I wonder if there's a graphic novel version of some of the books that I want to read, but I'm intimidated by the classicness of them, and I'm afraid I won't enjoy them, and it will ruin the idea of them I have in my head. And I'll have to go to the bookstore and pick it up and kind of flip through it a little bit more and see if that's going to make it onto the list. Slash, I'll see how far I get with all my other books, because I also have February split up with some romance books for the Valentine season. I also wanted to read a few different kind of levels of books, so I'm also reading a children's book from the Little People Big Dream series. This series focuses in on famous people from history and the achievements that they've accomplished, but kind of tells the tale from when they were a child up to the point when they became the person that they're famous for being. So I'm probably going to pick somebody from that series and read one of those as a children's book. And for my middle grade YA kind of book, I'm going to be reading a book from the Rick Riordan series that came out in October, and that is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. This book was written by Kwame Mbalia. I am glad that he had a black author write this book for his universe. And I'll read you Rick Riordan's review of it. Rick says, don't get me wrong, Greek myths are great, but you can't swing a gorgon's head in any bookstore without hitting at least a dozen Greek myth-inspired books. Try finding great adventures based on West African gods and heroes like Niami or Anansi. Sorry if I'm saying those totally wrong. Try finding stories about modern kids who encounter African-American folk legends like High John, John Henry, or Br'er Rabbit. Those books are a lot harder to locate, despite the fact that millions of kids Kids would relate to those gods and heroes even more than they would to Hercules and Perseus. Sorry, my Greek dudes. Can you imagine what it would be like if you could find a book that wove the whole brilliant, beautiful tapestry of West African and African American legend into one magical world? A world that made young African American readers think, yes, this is my awesome mythology. This is my magic world to explore. And these heroic kids are just like me. A book that left all readers thinking, wow, why didn't I know about these amazing stories sooner? Like, for real, how come I know all about Hercules? I don't know anything about some of these other people. Hello, American education system. Kwame Mbalia has written that book. You are about to discover Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky, and your world will never be the same. He is someone every kid will relate to, and you will immediately want to be his friend. I'll tell you a secret. I cried while reading this book. Several times I just got overwhelmed with happiness, thinking about what this book would have meant to many of my students back when I taught middle school. I was delighted to see old friends like Br'er Fox, John Henry, and Gum Baby in such a fresh, modern, page turning adventure. I felt grateful to Kwame Mbalia for writing this book so that new generations of young readers could grow up with Tristan Strong and get to know the rich stories of West Africa and the African diaspora. As for Tristan's further adventures, the sky's the limit. Wait, no. Tristan punched a hole in the sky. There are no limits. That message from Rick is also what helps solidify it as my choice to buy multiple copies of, to donate to local schools and libraries in my area in Austin, and I hope you guys will participate in that too. If you are reading a book for Black History Month and you are not planning to keep it for your shelf, I hope you will consider putting a cover on them for the school library so the librarian doesn't have to hassle with that, and donating them. Another book I'm considering, though I may push it off for June for Pride Month, is a book I don't even know where I found it. Maybe when I was originally looking up books to read for Black History Month, but it's called Black Flamingo. And from what I remember of the synopsis, it's about a young black boy who discovers he wants to be a drag queen. The cover is what caught my eye because it's this boy surrounded by pink feather boas. Like <laughs> crazy pretty. It was very eye-catching, so I immediately clicked on it and was dying. I wanted to read it immediately, and I was like, ugh, 
That could be so good if I just like wait a month for Black History Month or wait a whole bunch of months for June. If I don't read it in February, I'm definitely reading it in June though, because the cover alone. And we all know I'm a superficial reader. Oh my god, I've forgotten. During all of this filming, I never turned on my little like flickering lantern looking light thingy. It's so cute too. I need to get like a frosted glass like pillar candle holder to put it in so you can't see that it's just some piece of plastic. But other than that, isn't it cute? I thought it was cute. I guess for now it's just holding down the cover of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell so it doesn't like bow up paperbacks. <laughs>